Hello, First Alberta. We were recording a mentor meeting this week, and it was called Your First Meet, and it hit me that the stuff we're talking about in the First Meet mentor meeting actually would be really good for students as well, especially those that are attending their first meet ever for their first tech challenge season. And so I decided we're going to go through the PowerPoint. I modified it for student stuff specifically so that you can know what to expect when you come to your first meet here sometime in November or early December. So, what to expect? Today we're going to talk about what happens before the event, we're going to talk about robot inspection, we're going to talk about the driver meeting, matches, and what it means to volunteer at a first event. So, before we get started, the first event you are going to participate in is going to be one of these six events here. We have one event happening in northern Alberta, one uh, that'll be the Edmonton area, one in central Alberta, this one starts in uh, Lacombe, and then uh, we move to Red Deer for some of the other events there, and then the other four leagues happen in Calgary, and they're named Na Misty and Ni Misty, and those are Blackfoot words for west and east, respectively. We were gifted them last year as part of our efforts to uh, indigenize robotics and first, and to go down our path and of reconciliation here. So no matter where you're competing, the event is going to look very much similar. What's going to happen is that we're going to start by uh, arriving at the event, but before we get there, there's some stuff that goes on here. I want to point out something that a lot of teams don't know about, especially when they're new. The game manual that you got on September, I believe it was 9th this year at the start of the season, actually changes throughout the season. There's two things that you need to be aware of, and the links are here for both of them. So on the FTC season resources page, you're actually going to go and find something where we, well, first of all, you're going to find all the resources. I'm just going to drag another window in here. This is the team resource page the link is there this is your competition manual which has now been updated twice with team updates so team updates are where we go in and we actually change the rules or the wordings on rules slightly now nothing major has changed most of it is very specific language but sometimes you know things get missed in the game manual and they need to get fixed I'll give you an example here in uh, one of the pieces here we realize for any of you that have the Studica kit that the Studica uh, power switch was not listed in the game manual but it is indeed a illegal power switch so if you had that Studica power switch, you can now use it because it's been added to the game manual because that was a clear omission. As well, in these resources, you're going to find the Q&A, the question and answer. And I, this is a really important thing for you to check out throughout the season because every week the game design committee, the people who make the game, go out and they answer your question. You'll notice that there's actually probably 200 questions on here and many of them have been answered. Now, this is not a place where you can put a mechanism or picture of a mechanism and say, is this legal? They're not going to do that. But things like, I, and this one is one of the biggest ones that has happened this year, could I have a definition of what the word supported means in the game manual? So this is clearly somebody who's planning on leaning on the submersible while they try to climb it. And the question is, can I lean on it? Am I supported by it if I'm leaning sideways on the submersible? The answer here is... No, you're not supported by it at that point. You can lean all day long as long as you have no vertical force applied to that one. Checking out these, ver these Q and A's is very important. And if there's ones that you think might affect your robot, it's sometimes a good idea to print these off or even bring them on a phone in case you have to have a conversation, a respectful one, with a referee during your match or during one of your matches. So with that being the case, I'm just gonna reduce this here. The team updates, you can sign up for updates for, for them to email them to you. They happen every few weeks. The Q&A is updated every, I believe, Tuesday or Thursday. So definitely check those out. Now, every team member that attends the FIRST Robotics event must register on firstinspires.org. This is the website where you have your account. This is where your parents can sign the consent and release. And before you can participate in a tournament, your parents must sign that consent and release. I recommend that people, the students who are in this program check with their lead mentors at least a week before their event to make sure this has been done because often a parent will go into the system, they don't understand the system, and they accidentally check off their own consent and release as a volunteer. And while we'd love them to volunteer, the point here really is to get you into the competition as the student. So if I'm talking to you students, make sure that you have those. You should see green check marks, kind of like this here, on your mentor's roster. And if you see a little red X, that's a bit of a problem and you need to go check out what, what happened there. All right, so let's talk about robot inspection. When you arrive at the event, the first thing you should do is set up your pit. Immediately after that, I recommend going to robot inspection. I have a slide here that talks about this, but the worst case scenario for you if you go to robot inspection and there are things wrong with your robot is we get most of the hard work out of the way. We go through the robot and field inspection checklist at this point, and that's a checklist that you as a team should probably be going through well before you get to uh, well before you get to your competition. So I'm going to pull up the inspection checklist and show you a 
kind of what you're looking at here. And the inspection checklist goes through two pieces of inspection. You're going to go to a robot inspection, and you're going to go to a field inspection. And it might be a different inspector doing those two sides. The robot inspection is about the physical build of your robot. Is it the right size? Does it have the right mechanisms? Is it going to damage the field? Things like that. New this year, you have to make sure that your robot fits within the size requirement and also the horizontal extension limits. And that is something that, I think I have this up in the manual here, the horizontal extension limits are a brand new thing this year. It's also where you'll check that your team numbers are legal. So make sure that your team numbers follow the rules in the game manual. With that being said, once you've been through robot inspection, you're going to be going to a field inspection. This is probably going to be run by one of our FTAs, that's our field technical advisors. Now the FTAs are going to check that the electronics and control systems on your robot work the way they're supposed to. I'm going to go back to my uh, my uh, slideshow here just for just a second because the... Um, the piece here that is most noteworthy is that in your field inspection, you are going to have to show that your driver station follows all the rules. The easiest way to do this is to go into your driver station, click on the menu, and go to self-inspect. In self-inspect, you'll get this screen that I have here on screen here, and it will show you all of the things that you need to do to follow the rules. Your inspectors are looking for those green check marks on the right-hand side. If they see a red X or an exclamation mark, they're going to know that something is not following the rules. This this covers most of the actual inspection for field inspection in that it makes sure that your Wi-Fi is named correctly, that your control hub is named correctly, your driver station is named correctly, that your password is not password because that is actually a rule that you cannot have a password named password. If you need to update your driver hub, please plug it into a laptop that has the Rev hardware client installed. That is by far the easiest way to actually update those uh, those particular stations. And uh, as a teacher, I'm going to tell you, pr try not to do that on school computers. It works way better on a personal laptop. And the Rev hardware client is not a very big program to just throw the newest software onto your driver station. With that being said, the other things in field inspection are all about, do you know how to operate your robot? Can you turn on teleop? Can you turn it into autonomous? I guess not in that order. And do you know how to emergency stop your robot? And it'll also ask you, do you know a few things about what you can and cannot do in the queue? We'll talk about those in a minute. I'm going to add that in inspections, try to ask your mentors to step back. And mentors really shouldn't be the ones getting inspected here. They're the ones advising you on how you build your robot. They're not building the robot for you. That's how FIRST is supposed to be. And if they're being gracious professionals about it, that's how it's going to work. If you're not sure about something, please ask someone in an orange shirt. We have them all over these competitions, and they are super helpful. And we'll absolutely answer those questions as best we can. Again, get inspected right away. The worst case scenario of you getting inspected right away is that you walk away with a handful of things that you have not passed on inspection. And there's nothing wrong with that. Go back, fix them, change that Wi-Fi password so it's not password anymore, and come back to check that off. It's way easier to re-inspect for like three things on the checklist than to go through the entire thing right at the end of the inspection period. So add inspection right away, get through those, and it'll be all good. And if you pass the inspection, that's awesome because then you can start on the practice field. Now, immediately after every team at the event has passed inspection, we usually try to have our driver meeting. Drivers are everyone on the drive team. Your drivers, your human player, your drive coach should attend the driver meeting. Your whole team can attend the driver meeting if you want to. There's no problem with that. Uh, but for sure, your drive team needs to be there. At that point, the head ref is going to walk you through their expectations of how you should operate as a drive team. At that point as well, the match schedule will be handed out. So please stop pestering the field staff before the driver meeting for, for the match schedule. We don't generate it until all of the teams have passed inspection to make sure that we've got it all set at that point. So at that point, you're going to take your team schedule. You're going to mark down when all of your matches are. I personally, as a senior mentor, recommend that you then go talk to the teams that you will be on alliances with because teamwork is really important in this game. What happens then is I, I recommend that each team have a match monitor, somebody whose job is to make sure that you are lined up for queue in time, ready to go. On an, in an ideal world, if, like, if you're in match 5 and match 3 has just finished, you should probably be heading to the field. We will have match volunteers that will actually be coming to get you to tell you to come to the queuing tables. Those are the tables next to the field that you wait at before your match starts. So you can go watch the match before you. That's all good. Typically in an event, at least one during the day, and I know we have one of our league meets is going to be an afternoon one, it might be different, um, typically you're going to play one or two matches before lunch, and then you're going to play the rest of your six matches after lunch, because you get six matches for each of your, uh, each of your meets. 
So when you get into queue, you're going to be handed a lanyard as the drive team. This is going to indicate that you are allowed to be on the field. I'm just going to add on here that you do need safety glasses in the on the field uh, field side, but you do not need them as spectators. So your parents, your friends, they can go sit in the stands. That's all good. But if you're on the drive team, safety glasses on every time. Also, if you're in the pit, safety glasses on as well. After your match, we're going to ask you to bring your lanyard back to the queuing table. People forget all the time. We have to send people running after them. It's a waste of time. Please don't do that to us. Remember to return your lanyard if you're on a drive team. When you're in the queue, you can strategize. You can do final checks. You can check with your teammate. You can make sure your driver station is all running and ready. But there's a few things you can't do. The rules prevent you from changing any code while you are in queue. So make sure that that gets pushed way early in the competition and not right before your match. That is actually something that you have to check off on the driver uh, in the um, field inspection to make sure that you understand it. As well, you can fix your robot in queue, but I recommend that you don't because it is at all possible, have your robot ready before you get there because a lot of our worst breakdowns have happened with teams being super last minute. I also recommend that if you have the ability to Practice everyone's roles on this team. Practice taking the robot to a match, placing it down, aligning it with the wall where you want it to be, turning on your driver station, listening for someone else to say, three, two, one, go, and pressing the button to activate auto, and then someone else to say, drivers, pick up your controllers. This will actually smooth over your team. This isn't a rule, but it is something I recommend of teams because having that practice and knowing everyone's roles and what you do prevents confusion and prevents some potentially, uh, potentially match affecting uh, decisions on the field. Now I want to explain ranking points for a moment here. And I answer a lot of questions at events about these. So when you win a match, you get two ranking points. When you tie a match, you get one ranking point. When you lose a match, you get zero ranking points. When you are at your match, you're going to see a screen near the pits that's going to show the live rankings of all of the teams in the competition. How this works is for every match that you win, your ranking point initially at least is going to go up by 0.2 every time you win. What the computer is actually doing is it's taking your total number of points and it's dividing it by 10. Because we're going to take your best 10 matches out of the first two meets. So out of the first two events you show up at, we're going to take your best 10 scores. You play 12 matches, so you get two matches that just don't count. That ranking point, which maxes out at 2, so 2 is a perfect ranking score. That means you went 10, uh, 10 wins or more in the course of those 12 matches is what you're aiming for. But <clears throat> we're going to rank teams based on those ranking points at the league tournament for the playoffs. If the ranking points are tied, we go to tiebreaker points. Tiebreaker point one is your total points in autonomous in those best 10 matches. And then tiebreaker two, if we're still tied, which we rarely are at that point, is your end game points. And uh, those things create the rankings for these events. Just so you know, your rankings from the meets, these 10 matches out of the 12, will then be combined with your ranking points from the matches at the league tournament to figure out who goes to the playoffs. If you see a star, a little asterisk, next to a match in one of your uh, one of your events, it means you're a surrogate team. This means that at an event, you might actually get to play seven matches. But for the event, the match that you have the little star next to you, it means that your score will not count. Now, your score might count for your teammate, it might count for your opponents, but it won't count for you. You're just there to help out. And this most often happens in events that have an odd number of teams, because we have to have even numbers of teams on alliances. So... Uh, reminder for teams, your mentor, your adult mentor, may be your drive coach, okay? Drive coaches can be students as well. That's all good, no problems. And that drive coach must never touch the controls or the robot during the match. They are there to observe, to communicate, and to tell you what they're, they're doing. They're a coach. That's what they're supposed to be. But they don't touch the robot. That's one of the easiest ways to get penalized in, a, in many games. Human players should ask the referee nearest to them if they have questions about where and when they can stand, kneel, or move. We're friendly people in the field staff. If you're sitting before a match and you look at the referee and say, referee, can I lean into the field this way? Can I go down on one knee? The referee will say, no, you have to start the match standing. At that point, you can go and do whatever, okay? The field area is a safety glass zone. I cannot stress this enough. You must have your safety glasses on. Uh, if you are warned about your safety glasses too many times at the side of the field, there can be repercussions for your team. We don't want to do that. Um, the field staff are watching. Referees notice when you have your safety glasses up here on your head. That's not a good look. Please put them on, keep them on during the event. It'll make life much, much easier. So let's talk about volunteering. 
at at the end of the meet, by the way, you play six matches and then you're done. We're going to have a playoff and judging in the league tournament. We'll talk about that later. But for now, at a meet, you just play six matches and that's your day. And it's awesome. You celebrate and we have some uh, we have some fun throughout those six matches. But they require people to actually run them. And you can be one of those people. If you want to volunteer at a meet where you are not actively working on a part of your robot, maybe you're one of those inspires or marketing people on your team that is going to go help out. Uh, maybe you want to go help out at another meet that's not one of your meet and see what all the other robots are doing. We absolutely take people as field reset cures and runners as students on teams. We need these people to run the events. To sign up for those, go on firstinspires.org and you'll see a little handshake icon on the one side and that's actually the volunteer tab. In that one, you can actually select events to go volunteer at or offer to volunteer at, and we will absolutely take some people. And as a, as a bonus, we are going to actually be crediting a certain amount of our fees towards teams for next year based on them volunteering and helping out at events. If anyone has wants to be an MC or game announcer, please contact your league coordinator. This is something where we, we like to kind of vet those people because the MC is responsible for the tone and kind of how things run, but we always like to have new MCs. There's nothing wrong with that at all. If you have alumni or parents and supporters who also want to help out, maybe your parents want to understand this robotics thing more, we are more than happy to have them in some roles. We always need robot inspectors, score trackers and scorekeepers, and referees for these events. Robot inspectors and referees should have some FTC experience, but if somebody wants to learn to score track, we can absolutely take somebody who is not, has very little FTC experience. All of those roles are things where we would like to not have alumni or parents from the teams participating in those events because there's a potential conflict of interest in those ones. That being said, the big one is in February when we're going to have four events in Calgary uh, and we're going to have the Northern Last Chance Qualifier and we're going to have the Northern uh, the Northern uh, League Tournament. For those events, uh, I, I know for the Calgary one specifically, they're two-day events. There's one event on Saturday, one event on Sunday, and your team is they're playing on Saturday. We would love to have your volunteers on Sunday to help out because there would be no conflict of interest there. Please remember that you do need to sign up for a lot of these roles if you want to do them, such as judging, at the championship in Red Deer in March. So if you are looking to be a judge at the end of the season, make sure you sign up for some of the league tournaments. Um, we're not really talking about those right now. Don't worry for a meet. You don't need to do judging. But there is a, it is a good idea for you, if you are a student on a team, to start thinking about your engineering portfolio and basically start documenting what you're doing. This could look like taking pictures of the CAD you've done or the robot in progress or your team as they're competing and starting to build up those booklets because you will need them in January and February for your league tournaments and potentially for the last chance qualifiers as well. If you have any questions, feel free to drop an email uh, to any of the organizers, First Tech Challenge at firstalberta.ca, and we'd be happy to answer those questions. We'd be happy to help you out here. Good luck with your building. Uh, continue being gracious professionals, and we'll see you all at your first meets in the next few weeks here. Cheers.